Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Monsters Manifested, right here on DM Tools with Max McCool. On today's episode, we're going to further continue our journey through the demonoid monster type by way of the Vrock. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. The Vrock's stat block can be found on page 64 of the Monster Manual, and its lore can be found on page 54. So, let's start there. Vrocks are dull-witted, capricious fiends that live only to create pain and carnage. A Vrock resembles a giant hybrid of humanoid and vulture, its gnarled bestial body and broad wings stinking of awful. Vrocks gobble humanoid flesh wherever they can, stunning potential prey with an ear-splitting shriek, then swooping down to attack with beak and claw. Vrocks can shake their wings, releasing clouds of toxic spores. Coveting pretty things, Vrocks turn against each other for the chance to lay claim to cheap jewelry or ornamental stones. Despite their love of treasure, Vrocks are difficult to bribe, seeing no reason to bargain when they can simply take what they want from a would-be bargainer's corpse. And that's all there is when it comes to the lore of the Vrock. So I find it interesting that they describe the Vrocks as these sort of rabid, bestial creatures without too much in the way of intelligence, but with enough intelligence apparently to covet things such as trinkets or jewelry or ornaments, stuff of that nature. However, they then sandwich that with a confirmation once again that they are not necessarily inclined to be bribed or bargained with. So it may be a little more tricky to implement a Vrock by way of external forces trying to utilize a Vrock as a tool, but I think we'll be able to figure something out using the Vrock and its motivations to be the monster of choice that we put our players up against. But before we get into all of that, let's check out some stats, shall we? The Vrock is a large fiend, demon, with a chaotic evil alignment. It has an armor class of 15, which is natural armor. It has hit points that average 104, or 11d10 plus 44, and it has a movement speed of 40 feet, as well as a flying speed of 60 feet. The Vrock has a strength of 17, a dexterity of 15, a constitution of 18, an intelligence of 8, a wisdom of 13, and a charisma of 8. Its saving throws include dexterity plus 5, wisdom plus 4, and charisma plus 2. The Vrock has damage resistances to the types of cold, fire, lightning, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical weapons. It is also immune to the damage type of poison and the poisoned condition. The Vrock has the senses of dark vision for 120 feet, a passive perception of 11, it speaks the languages of abyssal and telepathy for 120 feet, and is a challenge rating of 6. On to the ability. Magic resistance. The Vrock has advantage on saving throws against spells and other magical effects. Now, on to the actions. Multi-attack. The Vrock makes two attacks, one with its beak and one with its talons. Beak is a melee weapon attack with a plus six to hit, a reach of five feet on one target. On a hit, it does an average of ten or 2d6 plus three piercing damage. Talons. Also a melee weapon attack with a plus six to hit, a reach of five feet on one target. On a hit, it does an average of 14 or 2d10 plus three slashing damage. Spores, which recharges on a roll of six. A 15 foot radius cloud of toxic spores extends out from the Vrock. The spores spread around corners. Each creature in that area must succeed on a DC-14 constitution saving throw or become poisoned. While poisoned in this way, a target takes an average of 5 or 1d10 poison damage at the start of each of its turns. A target can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns, ending the effect on itself on a success. Emptying a vial of holy water on the target also ends the effect on it. And finally, Stunning Screech which can be done once per day. The Vrock emits a horrific screech. 
Each creature within 20 feet of it that can hear it and that isn't a demon must succeed on a DC-14 constitution saving throw or be stunned until the end of the Vrock's next turn. And that's all there is when it comes to the stats of the Vrock. So overall, there's a fair amount of information there that we can utilize, I think, and I think we can utilize it in such a way that it helps inform us in how we choose to use the Vrock for our adventures in the way of framing them and sort of setting a tone and a reason as to why our players and their adventuring party will be inclined to seek out this Vrock and defeat it. So with all that being said, let's jump into some adventure crafting then, shall we? Okay, so the first thing that comes to mind for me when seeing the Vrock, its abilities and its description and thinking about how we could implement it in an adventure, I immediately go to the Vrock's main motivations. So the Vrock itself seems to be very inclined to cause havoc and chaos and wreak destruction upon the material plane simply for the opportunity to acquire shinies, for lack of a better term, items, trinkets, ornaments, stuff like that, to, I presume, collect them and hoard them up and have its own little treasure trove. So I think a very straightforward and concise adventure that you could develop for your players would be something to the effect of a very wealthy city or affluent town, if you would, where many, if not all, or most of the residents of the city are well off, well to do. The city has perhaps banks or reserves, perhaps even a museum or something like that, uh, lots of shops, maybe some sort of mercantile shop even, where trade guilds may come together in order to create this sort of massive market square where people can go and collect whatever they want, purchase whatever they want. And the Vrock notices this place or finds out about this place by some way, shape or form. Perhaps it is just attracted to those kinds of things and it can sense a concentration of highly valuable trinkets and commodities, I suppose you could call them. And therefore goes into the town and, or swoops into the town really, and causes all sorts of chaos and frenzy and destruction and accosts these residents of the town for their goods and collects whatever it collects during its pass through, takes it back to whatever location or hoard or cave that it may place these things into, and then returns shortly after to collect more something to that effect. And then you have a very clean sort of straightforward quest for your players to go on in that your players may find themselves in this town or arrive at the town by means of suggestion or rumor or happenstance. And the conflict that they have to contend with is this once affluent town or perhaps still presently affluent town being raided constantly by a monstrous creature that is destroying their homes, destroying their shops, stealing their livelihoods, their valuables, their inherited antiques, perhaps something like that. And so the people of the town or the person or group that runs the town requests them to take on this Vrock or perhaps find the location of its treasure hoard and return whatever they can to the town. And through there, you could create something where perhaps your players have to investigate the Vrock, maybe pull some surveillance or reconnaissance and see where the Vrock flies around, check out its patterns, perhaps wait until a night or day where the Vrock comes into the town and causes all of its destruction and damage and then flies off and they track it back to its location, to its dwelling, and contend with it there. Maybe they try to catch it off guard or while it's maybe sleeping, not that necessarily Vrock sleep. I'm That's more of a parallel that I'm making myself to dragons as 
classically dragons have a treasure hoard in their caves that they rest on and sleep in and stuff like that. So, but you could definitely use something to that effect. And I think that it's pretty simple and straightforward and not too complicated for your players or yourself to keep track of or to consider whether or not they should do it. I mean, they may not want to do it because they may just think that it's not worth their time if they're already higher up in levels or they're not particularly keen on helping out this city for whatever reason, but you can always incentivize them if you'd like with a place of residence, perhaps a cut of the treasure found, you know, sort of a finder's fee if you would, and they can then use that to buy their own shinies, which is I'm sure part of what they're interested in doing during their adventures. Another way that you could use a Vrock, I think, is in the way of a Vrock that is motivated to find a specific item. So Vrocks have apparently this inherent desire or lust or greed, if you would, for trinkets, ornaments, stuff like that. So what I'm thinking is, is if you create a situation where the Vrock is motivated by a particular item and the rhyme and reason for it could be any number of things that could be up to your discretion. But the simplest example that I could give you is that a Vrock is motivated to collect one specific trinket or amulet or ornament rather, and will stop at nothing to get it simply because it cannot get it or it failed to get it on its first attempt, right? Let's say you have a Vrock that came down and assaulted a traveling merchant with all sorts of oddities and curios and items in their wagon. And they were assaulted by this Vrock. The Vrock came in and attacked them and started kind of swiping up all of the things it could grab. But perhaps the merchant was somewhat capable with a sword or some magic, or perhaps the merchant was well-to-do or well-off in their business transactions. So they have a bodyguard who is capable of fending off these types of incursions or attackers. Perhaps it was just happenstance and the merchant has someone like a cleric that they are taking with them because perhaps this cleric is on a pilgrimage or has been requested to show up to help with some burial rites at some other place, something like that, right? But either way, the Vrock swoops down, tries to collect as much as it can, sees one particular item that it really wants, and what ends up happening is, is that it is fended off by the merchant and or their guards or security or whatever you want to call it. And what has happened is, is now that the Vrock has failed to collect the thing that it wanted to collect initially, it has the most fervent desire to collect that one thing. And that one thing may not even be anything special or powerful or anything in particular, right? The drive of the Vrock is simply because it wanted it, but could not get it. Therefore, now it must have it, right? Imagine something to the effect of a high fantasy medieval style, big red ball that you cannot have. And that's the main motivation for the Vrock. And since its failure, the Vrock has been tracking this item and is watching it as it has passed hands. Perhaps it is sort of surveilling the environment. Now how it's keeping track of it is really up to you. You could have a situation or scenario where perhaps the Vrock picked up the item and whenever a Vrock picks something up, it has this remnant residue, if you would, where it can now gain some sense of where the thing is. Imagine it in the way of like, it can smell it in the air So it can track it from one spot to another across vast distances. And then you have this demon drawing a line of destruction all across the land for the singular goal of collecting that one thing and nothing else. And I think that that could be something interesting or enticing for your players to look at and maybe decide to investigate a little bit more, especially if it's presented in sort of the sideline you know, as sort of a, a hook or a thread for your players to see and decide whether or not they wish to pull on. And probably the more and more it's 
presented to them or on their travels if they hear about these towns that all have similar catastrophes happen to them in similar ways, you know, being raised to the ground and being accosted by monstrous vulture-like demonic monsters, it may pique their interest and they may decide to go take a look at it for themselves and see what's going on. And then in that, you can have them save the day and find the item, find the trinket, and then depending on how sadistic of a DM or GM you are, you can have it actually be an item of powerful use and value, or you could have it just be some little pearl necklace or something like that that was just made as jewelry, and the Vrock had this strange obsession with it. Finally, another way that I could see the Vrock being used in an adventure or series of adventures would be by way as a tool or as a weapon for some other deviant individual. Now, that may be seen as difficult to implement due to the fact that in the description of the Vrock, the Vrock was described as a creature that is not particularly inclined to bargain for the things that it wants when it could simply destroy whomever the bargainer is and take what it wants anyway. However, that does not necessarily mean that a Vrock will think that of any creature or individual, regardless of whether or not it is easily visible or obvious to the Vrock that the potential bargainer would decimate and destroy them. So you could go about this in a couple of ways where you have a higher ranking demon or a demon lord invoking the Vrock and charging it to go and cause destruction and devastation to places. Imagine if you would a sort of medieval fantasy bomber where the Vrock or many Vrocks would fly overhead and dispense their spores across the land, across a town or city or a settlement or fort or kingdom or anything like that. And the people of these settlements are becoming poisoned and sickened and they are slowly weakening themselves and dying and stuff like that so that the Vrox and this higher ranking demon, something like a Nalfeshni or a Merilith even, is trying to weaken and destroy these towns, these people and stuff like that, either for the sake of destruction and chaos simply put, or because there is something of relevant or relative value to them in that location. And I think that you could utilize that in an interesting way where perhaps this town that's getting dirty bombed, let's say, is the residence of perhaps a faction or a guild of demon hunters who have proven to be very successful, both presently and historically. And in order for the demons to continue their reign of chaos, they cannot have any able-bodied individuals that may confront, challenge, and defeat them. So they use different tactics to try and stunt the opposition from being able to defend themselves so that they can take over and rule the material plane for themselves or for their demon lords or anything like that. And in that, I think that a Merilith may be a pretty good option actually to use with the Vrock because they are very militaristic. You know, they can play the part of generals and they're both highly strategic and effective combatants on the battlefield. So I think that could be a nice little tie up like that. You could use things like perhaps there is an old altar to a demon lord, which I've brought up before, and they're seeking to reactivate it or reclaim it for themselves. You could use something to the effect of an individual who summoned a demon, either intentionally or unintentionally, and has released them into this land, and now basically the genie is out of the bottle and they can't control it, so they're just running rampant throughout the city or throughout the realms or throughout the land, what have you, and this is what's now taking place that your adventurers must contend with and hopefully overcome. And actually, you could even do something like that in a different way, where perhaps it's not necessarily direct assault and combat. So 
if you would, imagine something to the effect of a town that is being poisoned and plagued and its people are getting sick, they're getting weak, they're dying. Even though there is an abundance of food, they are relatively healthy, there's not very much in the way of infection or dirt or waste or anything like that. But for some reason, everybody is getting sick and they're sort of dropping like flies. So your adventurers are asked to investigate the town, the surrounding area, stuff like that. And then they receive some information, perhaps from a local at the tavern, perhaps from a merchant in town who may have been on the road and stopped off for a little while, even from just random civilians or something like that, that they spotted a monster or something strange out in the fields, perhaps near the woods by where the pond or the lake is. And once they saw the monster, the monster flew at them and chased them off and they ran away frightened and didn't know what to do. Presumably or hopefully your adventurers would go and investigate that and see what's going on. And when they investigate that, effectively what they would see happening or what they would end up seeing is that there is a Vrock who is living around the area, the surrounding area of a lake or a pond or something like that. And it is constantly diving into this body of water and trying to do something. Presumably your players wouldn't know, but you could use something to the tune of there being a treasure chest down there or some items of value down there that the Vrock spotted and is intent on acquiring, but cannot get down there and make it or does not know necessarily where it is. Perhaps it is buried under the mud and the silt and all of that stuff in the bowl of this lake or body of water. And what's going on is it is now contaminating the water of this lake or pond and said lake or pond is the main source or water supply for the town, right? So now you have this connection of the people getting sick and dying for some unknown reason. And when the players go to investigate it, the reason behind it is this demonic creature that is not necessarily inclined on causing that kind of chaos and damage, but is trying to acquire an item that's buried beneath the mud, as it were, and due to its nature of being this sort of caustic, stinking creature, it is effectively contaminating the water and infecting all the people who drink it. And I think that that could make for a pretty interesting and curious adventure for your players to go on, where they may think it's one thing or another, but not necessarily realize what the case may be. And you can help with that if you want to go more detective mystery themed with perhaps some sort of ill reputed individuals, you know, maybe some people that are considered sort of untrustworthy or slimy and, you know, everyone thinks it's that person, but it's never that guy. It's always the, the other person, right? And have them think that the untrustworthy or potentially presumably slimy underhanded individual be the cause of it when in fact it really isn't and it's just happenstance. All in all though, I do think that the Vrock is a cool monster. It's definitely unique, similarly to the way that the Shadow Demon was unique and different, but obviously by different means than the Shadow Demon. Admittedly, I thought that by reading the description and the lore of the Vrock that it may hinder us in our ability to develop something that could be compelling for our players because it seemed as though Vrocks were pretty one-noted so if you were to utilize them as sort of the spotlight monster in an adventure it would be a pretty basic and straightforward adventure. However with that being said I think that you can go a couple of different directions with the Vrock that could still lead to some curiosity and intrigue amongst your players at the table and you can make for some adventures that are different in that they're not necessarily cut and dry where the Vrock is a monster that likes shiny things so it goes for shiny things and conveniently your players are in a shop that sells all sorts of rare valuable expensive things and a Vrock barrels down and smashes through the roof and tries to steal up everything that it can. And I think that that says something 
to the Vrock in terms of how it can be utilized in ways other than the cut and dry straightforward way, which is absolutely still a valid way to use them, right? It would be highly effective and would charge a reaction, I think, from your players if it was something as straightforward as them being in a shop and everything's fine and then suddenly the ceiling crashes around them and upon them and a Vrock is there present now floating in the air and using its caustic claws to smash through display cases and swipe up any sort of artifacts and amulets and ornaments and trinkets that may be there, right? And then flies off into the distance. That could inspire your players to immediately go after it right then and there just because, you know, it almost killed them by barreling down on this establishment. So, but either way, that's all I got for you fine folks today when it comes to the Vrock and how to implement it in some adventures for your game. I'd like to thank you all very much for tuning in. I highly appreciate it. On the next episode of Monsters Manifested, we're going to be covering our final lesser demon within the demonoid monster type in the monster manual with the Yaklal, which I think could prove to be pretty interesting and curious. The Yaklal appears to be a sort of mustard-colored, dripping, poisonous tree trunk, so I'm not quite sure what that means or what the Yaklal is all about, but I am intrigued to read about it, check out its stats, and see what we can make of it when we get there. But until then, please be sure to rate the podcast, comment, like the podcast, share it with your friends or whomever you think might be interested in listening to it, as it would help the podcast out quite a bit, help the podcast grow and get to the ears of more people. I'd highly appreciate it. And if you're listening to this episode of Monsters Manifested on YouTube, I'd kindly ask that you like, comment, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell because apparently it does things and it would help the channel grow, help the podcast grow as well, help it get to the eyes and ears of more people and help them in coming up with some ideas for adventures that they could run, a way to spice up their campaign, give them a little bit of inspiration for their own thing and sort of just get those creative juices flowing. But until next time, Thank you all very much once again for tuning in. I'm Max McCool, and I'll see you on the next one. Have a good day, everyone.